In this video, I'm going to give a quick overview of Cantabile's new binding system. So this is build 4064 here, which was the last build with the old binding system. And this is 4150, which has the new uh, binding systems. They were introduced in build uh, 4100, but uh, none of those builds have been marked as stable yet. So you may not have seen it. OK, so um, the main thing to understand with this is under the covers, the binding system has been completely re-engineered from the ground up. It was a massive job. It took, it's taken a lot of time, um, but it's it's been out for a while. It's pretty well tested and I'm pretty sure it's stable now. Um, from a user's point of view, um, the underlying implementation doesn't really matter that much, but there's two main things that um, I want to um, make sure you understand before you move to this new uh, system. The first is that the file system has changed or the file format of songs and racks has changed. So if you save a rack or a song in build 4150 and try to load it in um, anything before build 4100, uh, the bindings will just be empty. They just will not show at all. Um, and the reason for that is because um, because the implementation has changed. Um, I'm planning forward planning for um, some new features with bindings. So I've just completely changed the file format and when you open a song from uh, the old build in the new build, uh, Cantabile will upgrade your old bindings. Um, everything comes across um, as uh, perfectly as far as I can tell now. And um, your bindings should continue to work as they were. But if you save that song and then reload it in the old version, uh, your bindings will be gone. Now, the what, what I recommend is before installing or running this build, is making sure you've got a backup of all your songs and racks from uh, before, just in case you need to go back to this build for some reason. Um, Cantabile will warn you the first time you run this build, um, uh, after having run an older build, that um, you should do that. And it also backs up your songs and racks um, that it loads from an older build, um, just as a, a second backup, if you like, to make sure you don't lose anything because I know there can be a lot of work going into setting up these bindings and you really don't want to have to do them again. Okay, so that's it. Um, make sure you've got a backup. Don't try to load old songs, uh, sorry, newly saved songs in the old build. It just won't work. Okay, so that's that. Now, from a user's point of view, um, the biggest change with all of this is just the user interface here. You can see with the old build, if you added a binding here, um, it was all edited kind of in this slot and there was a whole bunch of columns across here for all the different things you could configure. Um, it was just getting out of hand. It was a bit hard to work with. It's hard to see everything to do with one binding in one place. So in this build, um, the binding actually comes up in a separate uh, dialogue where everything is listed out. And you'll see a lot of these binding points will look familiar. Some of them are new um, or renamed rather. There's actually, there's actually very little new functionality here. Um, but all the old functionality does carry over, uh, just some things have moved around. Okay, so the way this works is you choose the object you want to bind from, so say a MIDI port, and let's choose the, uh, say, on-screen keyboard, and we want to map from a controller, and let's controller whatever, 29 will do, and then you choose what you want to map it to, so let's say to the master levels, and output gain, and then you get this mapping, which controls how this thing is actually mapped from this controller to this setting. Now, depending on the type of um, uh, objects you have selected and binding points, you'll get different types of mapping. And in fact, with these two binding points, which is a value to a value, there's a number of different ways to map them. So there's an automatic one, which is just range, which is just maps a source range to a target range. There's jump prevention and some of these older options. Um, or you can choose a relative value encoder, so that's for rotary encoders, uh, you know, endless knobs. Um, there's a value condition mapper, which lets you um, map, you know, based on if it's, um, you know, these arithmetic uh, comparators, and you can choose what value to check uh, to select. So th there's various um, versions of these mappers depending on the objects that you have selected. There's a comments field here where you can type in. Um, just, just notes about um, what, what this binding's for and what it does, why it's there. And then you've got the old kind of um, settings from uh, over here listed out here as well. So you can disable a binding. You can mark it as bi-directional. Not all bindings can be bi-directional. There's a timing uh, option here, 
which gives you the scheduling and re-triggering options that used to be uh, in here. So there was re-triggering, there was um, delay options on some bindings over here. They're now available on all bindings in the new system. Okay, so there's that. Um, there's a test button which lets you send various values and just check that the binding is working. And then this is just a d diagnostic setting. Um, if you're really digging into bindings, trying to figure out uh, what's going on, each binding has an ID and you can turn on uh, binding uh, logging and actually look in the log file to see which bindings are firing and what they're doing. Okay, um, that's about it um, from a user's perspective. The, the UI has changed. Some of the things have moved around. Um, so for example, um, I think there used to be like PC keyboard for the source side and then the target, there was something else for keyboard. I think it was under, I can't even remember now, send keys somewhere. Um, whereas now there's just a single um, PC keyboard which can receive and a PC keyboard that can also send keys. Okay, so, so things have moved around just to, to make them more consistent and a bit more obvious. If you're having, having trouble finding a binding point, you can do one of two things. You can either um, create it in the old binding system uh, with an old build and then upgrade, open that song in the new system and it will convert it and show you where it is or you can just use the learn functionality there's a learn learn button here and just like before all the other all the other settings have um, create bindings which can let you learn bindings uh, for these things okay that's it um, this was a massive job it's been a long time coming um, mostly from a user's perspective it's just UI changes and a, a bit of a um, few things to be aware of as far as the file format um, but I've also set the groundwork for hopefully uh, down the track um, some, uh, some more uh, nice improvements to bindings.